Hello, my friends. Welcome to Mysterious Globe. I'm your host, the Dingo Hunter. And with me, as always, my co-host, author, and adventurer, David Fletcher Hildress. It's super to be here. And this episode, super good. On today's episode of Mysterious Globe, we'll traverse the planet in search of evidence of ancient astronauts. We'll meet some of the foremost experts, travel to exotic and dangerous locations, and my friends, we'll get to the bottom of this theory once and for all, and you can choose for yourselves if our planet has had visitors from other planets in our distant past. All right, David Fletcher Hilders report. The ancient astronaut theory is simply the idea that in our distant past, ancient humans were visited by advanced beings from beyond the Earth. The theory goes on to say that these creatures aided in evolution by splicing DNA from primitive hominoids like Neanderthal man with their own DNA, making man in their own image. How biblical. The evidence of ancient astronauts is not limited to one place on the globe. The stories of man being seeded by extraterrestrials is an almost universal theme. From the legends of Samaria in the Middle East, to the many cultures of South and Central America, to the Aborigines of Australia, to the people of India, China, Japan, Mexico, even the royal bloodlines of Europe claim their right to rule through the blood of ancient super beings. Everybody's into it. That's why I wrote 17 books on it this last month. We began our journey looking for ancient astronauts in a quite unusual place, the Grand Canyon in Arizona. The reports have it that in the earliest part of the 20th century, a cave was discovered in the Grand Canyon that was filled with Egyptian mummies, Hindu artifacts, and even older materials from what some say were the lost cultures of Atlantis. We made our way into the secret area of the canyon, away from the tours, and met up with a member of the Hopi tribe. David Fletcher Hilder's report on the Hopi. The Hopi Indians are possibly the most interesting humans alive. There are only about 6,500 remaining today, but many believe they are the keepers of ancient knowledge of the stars and the lost tribe of Atlantis. They're also the guardians of the most sacred cave in Arizona. And by the way, that Princess Leia hairdo that George Lucas is so into in Star Wars, inspired by the Hopi. All right, this man's name is Chris. He's from the Hopi tribe. He's going to tell us some of the tales of his people and link it to the ancient astronauts. Chris... Yes. What can you tell us? First, there is an important cave here. Right. It was at one time filled with wonders. Right. But the white man came over 100 years ago, and much of the history was taken. Smithsonian, the mummies and gold. Yes. Yes. But the most valuable treasure was the craft. Right. The military came and took the craft. What kind of craft? Like magic or something? Like... No. Right. Flying machine. The UFO. Crockett, mate, you're telling me they took a UFO out of a cave here in the Grand Canyon? That is the legend. Wow, that's just amazing. Amazing mummies next to a UFO. I can't even think of better evidence. Super. Well, I know we're not allowed to visit the cave, but we're probably not too many pictures of it either, right, mate? Definitely. You know, not. is there anything I could take home, you know, share with the listeners? Oh, please. No. Oh. All of the evidence was oh. taken by the government. Oh. Right. Except... The thing. The thing. Oh, the, there is. Well, what, what's the thing? What is that? What, can I get a picture of the where thing? What's it? the thing? Show me the Follow thing. Follow the road to the north. Okay. You will know where to go. That road? Follow. Right. Signs. Right. I'm, you're writing this down? There I'm you can serious. take a yeah. picture. Right. All right. I'm, Thank you. Thank goodbye. you very much. We thanked the honorable man and followed the elder's advice. We traveled several miles up the road from the canyon. Every couple of miles, we would pass a giant reader board. A sign that read, The Thing Just Ahead, or What Is The Thing? Apparently, this ancient secret had a billboard marketing campaign. That was good for us. We finally approached a rundown building with a sign reading, You Found The Thing, or Home Of The Thing, something like that. We got out and we went in to see. To see the thing cost two dollars. Now what was the thing? It was two mummies. That's right, mummies. A female and an infant allegedly bought from the excavation of the Grand Canyon secret cave in 1903 or 1905, somewhere around there. Mummies in Arizona. What does it mean? David Fletcher Hilders report on mummies. Mummies were made famous by the pharaohs and empresses of Egypt, but are not exclusive to that region. They've been found on every continent. They've been found in China, Russia, South Africa, Germany, Denmark, the UK. There's even Arctic mummies found in Greenland. We had to wonder if there are mummies all over the world, isn't that evidence of a common ancestry somewhere in history? Possibly. 
but this doesn't prove anything about ancient astronauts. We did, however, hear a story of a UFO that was taken from the cave. Now, the sights we got to see here at the Grand Canyon were beautiful, and the thing, well, it was interesting. We knew it was time to move on. With David Fletcher Hildress at the helm of the Tinfoil Hat Times 777 VIP Boeing Adventuring Plane, we headed for our second destination in our quest to understand the ancient astronaut theory, Samaria. Today it's known as Iraq. Not one of the easiest places to get into, that's for sure. But in the name of science and archaeology, we had to try. It's my report. Iraq. Iraq is the cradle of civilization. It was here, once called Sumner, also called Mesopotamia, that historians agree the first written words were made. The first schools, courtrooms, architecture, tax records, running water. Everything was done here the first, even the wheel. Now it's the dumping ground for more radiation fallout than Hiroshima, thanks to decades of depleted uranium weapons from war. Many of the sites that we wanted to see were prohibited, but luckily, David Fletcher Hildress has connections. We were able to make a safe landing in Baghdad and make our way to the ruins of an ancient temple that few outside of the area knew about. The temple was called the Temple of Red and was part of ancient Babylon. It was said to be called the Temple of Red because it was here that sacrifices were made. And I mean blood sacrifices. From the moment we got there, we were mirrored by a Blackwater, or now they're called she mercenary detail, but they were too busy shooting at innocent civilians to pay too much attention to us. We did briefly talk to what seemed like a Merc officer. What the f*** are you doing out here, you f***ing uh, What are what? you doing, man? This is a war zone, man. Uh, right, we're working with the Tin Four Hat Times news team to make a documentary on ancient astronauts. What? And there's this temple, just look right there. Where well, some it, evidence man. for ancient astronauts exist. We're just going to go over there and uh, take some pictures. Right Shut there. up, man. Whoa, That's whoa. stupid. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Little green men flying around in the past, Calm dude. down. Listen here. You dude. Be listen. You bet you're out of shape for a soldier buns. We're careful. talking about little green men. Yeah, I said it. Right, you could definitely be a mercenary because you wouldn't be able to be in the service now. Actually, you better back off, killed, Mike. These, these green men that you're talking about yeah, right. are very tall. And they're actually kind of Caucasian, kind of Egyptian looking. They're probably a darkish, tannish brown, you know? Right, Beautiful. they're not very little, that's for sure. No, Whatever, not man. At all. You don't want to be around here long. There's bad guys coming. Oh, you mean there's more Blackwater people coming? No, man, there's bad guys coming, insurgents, man. We're the oh. good guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. You guys keep telling yourselves that. That's a good idea. Keep keep Whatever. saying that inside your little head. Oh, and, and tell Eric Prince I love the name change to she. It so makes me think of you guys less as civilian killing maniacs who murder for money and more civilian killing maniacs who kill for some weird ancient occult agenda. It's so much better than Blackwater, whatever that meant, with a big bear paw on it. What's that about? After dealing with the psychopaths of the She Corporation, we were finally able to get inside the Temple of Red. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. we're inside the Temple of Red, here in a not very well-known part of ancient Babylon. Now, here on the wall, wow. we're looking at what could only be described as Spaceship. spacecrafts. In spaceships. hieroglyphs, they drew them, they carved them into the walls. Big spaceships, it could be only that. Just like the Egyptian temple that depicts helicopters, jet planes, and UFOs. Here it is right here in Babylon. Thousands of years ago, this little-known temple also depicts flying machines. Is this evidence? Who knows? All right, here's what we know about UFOs. Many people think Roswell started it all in 1947. Nope. There's evidence of strange lights in the sky all throughout human history, from cave paintings on every continent to religious and Renaissance art to sailors' tales, including Christopher Columbus. Sounds like Ezekiel and Moses were seeing UFOs in the Bible. That's pretty weird. All right. Iraq was good to us. We got shot at a few times and had to talk to some of the scum of the earth working for she. But we also got to see some of the most amazing archaeological finds in the world in the history of humanity. The Sumerians were some amazing people and they say they learned everything from their gods. And their gods lived amongst them, walked in flesh. We couldn't quite leave this amazing country without visiting the Iraq Museum International. Now, at one time, it was the greatest house of human treasures in the world. And now, as you can see behind me, it's a rat hole for rats. Over 8,000 treasures have eluded from this state-of-the-art facility during the invasion. I'm sure it was just regular people that stole this stuff, not international archaeological thieves that specialize in this, which there's only a handful of them in the 
world that even you know, I have to sell archaeological finds like this. Anyway, I'm just saying, it's becoming a very political episode. I know it is. I was trying to show the people the link between humans and the stars, but I know it's so much of this crap's been stolen by people. Oh, God. And, uh, there's no so much depleted uranium. Like yeah. shrapnel just laying around. I feel good. It's hard to tell if I'll have indigestion at the beginning stages of cancer. I think it's time we get out of here. Time to go. After several security checks, we left the war zone of Iraq and headed to the beautiful land of India, a place filled with different answers to the same questions the Western minds have been pondering the last little bit of time. Serious. India is one of my favorite places in the world to be. In India, home to over one billion humans, ancient astronauts aren't a theory, they're part of the culture. See, I can do some segue announcing too. Right. Good job, David Fletcher Hildress. When we landed, we met up with a good friend of ours, Dr. Borosh Banu. He drove us to a special site in India where we could read about what the people of India call the monas, or flying machines. As I flipped through the pages of this ancient book, we noticed that the way people 4,000 years ago talked about the monas, the flying machines, are the same way that we talk about aircraft today. For example, when we decided to fly to India, we didn't describe ourselves getting into a giant machine made of steel with wings, engines, and a cockpit, and how it flies and the wind and whatnot. We simply say, we're going to fly to Iraq, and everyone knows we're going to fly an airplane. No questions asked, they just know what an airplane's like. The monas were apparently as common in prehistory in India as planes are now. This is an intriguing thought. Now in the field, we were excited. That's amazing, mate. We're looking at a 4,000-year-old book that literally discusses flying machines and actions. This one here, it's much newer, actually. But it, it actually shows the flying machines in action, like it shows how to make them. This is amazing. These are, these are literally UFOs. You know when Hitler came to India, he must have seen these. He must have taken a copy. He must have, because this is what the, the UFOs are talking about in Germany. This is the technology that they're talking about right here in India. Dr. Banu, what does this mean, mate? I am telling you this means that the people on this planet have known how to get around in flying machines for a long time, sir. Wow. Very long time. And the, and the people here in India, they've known this for... Thousands of years, my friend. Wow. Yes. That's so amazing, mate. Yes. So this new theory of ours in the yes. West about ancient astronauts... This is very old news, my friend. Very old news indeed. But it is how you say. Uh, much better late than never. Like so many before me, my trip to India blew my mind. Next, we were on our way to my home country of Australia. Land of dingoes, kangaroos, wallabies and koala bears. Fun place to talk to. It's also the home of the Aborigine people. Quite possibly some of the most interesting folk on the planet, much like the Hopi of Arizona. They seem to be the guardians of some very sacred knowledge, and it all has to do with the stars. David Fletcher Hildress and I sat down and visited with George, one of the leaders of an Aborigine tribe. He was shy and didn't want to be on camera, but he still told us the origin legend of his people. They came from a star system of Sirius, but not the star that we see in the sky. A small, impossible to see star. A dwarf star that orbits around the Sirius star. Impossible to see without a telescope. Yet these people know about it. In fact, they know very well about it. How do they know it existed? We asked them, and they said their ancestors told them it existed. Told them they came from it. This is the same story we got in Iraq. Who told these people? These amazing things. Who told the Sumerian people how to build the first wheel or map their stars or about sacred geometry? And who told these amazing Aborigine people that they came from a dog star, dwarf star, rotating around the star of Sirius? Dwarf. The Sumerians, star. just like the Aborigine, they say it was their gods, living, breathing creatures that came from the stars and changed humanity forever. Now we spent some time in the outback there, had to show David Fletcher hailed us a good time. It was super. We left our friends and headed back towards our plane. We got a call from our producer since the tinfoil hat times. It was time to head to South America and meet up with one of the major experts in the field of ancient astronauts, author of over 50 books, including the book Chariots of the Gods, Mr. Eric Von Daniken himself.